Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to start a S1 history lesson. Okay, so uh, today's topic it will be the traditional rural life of Hong Kong. So that will be a new topic for everyone. So therefore, uh, I hope you have already prepared your textbook. Okay, and also you may you may uh, open the browser. It is because uh, you may search for some information on the internet as well and uh, in this lesson we are going to also use the google map as well okay so what would be the topic today so that would be the traditional rural life of hong kong so if you have your textbook okay if you have your textbook this is your text oh no this is not your textbook but just for this part okay uh this part okay so the rural life in Hong Kong the rural life in Hong Kong so uh, before we have uh, we talk about we start this part 
uh, let's do some revision first. Uh, if we just focus on the topic of this chapter, like rural life in Hong Kong. So uh, let me ask you, do you know where should be the rural life or where should be the rural area in Hong Kong? Okay, so uh, I expect you may learn it in your draw field lesson. So if I show you the map, okay, so this is the map of uh, Hong Kong. Uh, if I ask you like uh, where should be the rural area and and do we still have the rural life, okay, in this area right now, okay. If you look at this map, if you look at this map, uh, you can see like Hong Kong. Uh, most of us, okay, or most of you, okay, you live in the Eastern District, okay, here that would be the Eastern District, and you will see, okay, you will see all this area, so that will be all in great in color. So all this area, we may call it urban area instead of rural area. So therefore, uh, what is really like urban and rural area? So we will just do the simple definition like, okay, urban area, urban area, that would be the developed area, okay? So the place has been developed already. So therefore, therefore, uh, like the modern building, like the transport network, okay, like the factory, okay, we can observe in the urban area. So all this area, it has been developed. Then what about the rural area? Okay, uh, that's not developed and that's it. And one uh, one important element, okay, in the rural area. So you should say like this. Okay, let me show you uh, one of the urb, rur, typical rural area in Hong Kong. It should be in the new territories. Okay, new territories here. Okay, new territories. And let Let's go to like Yunlong, okay, for Yunlong. So one place that would be very famous, okay, in Yunlong, Lam Sheng Wei, Lam Sang Wei, so that would be this part, Lam Sang Wei. So Lam Sang Wei, I may tell you, okay, so that is a very, very typical rural area. Why Lam Sang Wei is rural area? Uh, that is not just about like, ah, uh, from the map we can see uh, the area is green. Uh, that is not the major major criteria to say uh, this is the rural area but if we look at the land use okay we focus on the land use okay so what is the major la major land use of lamb sham rate okay if we move closer okay like this okay if we move closer like this okay uh, you can still see uh, some green area uh, but what should be like the land use, okay? The land use of this green area. Uh, if you haven't visited this place, okay, you may not, you may not note, okay, just from this picture because we can see the color only. And uh, if you open the browser, if you like open the Google Map, okay, you can see some label. Uh, the label here, oops, the label here. Okay, it may mention that it could be like the fish pond, or sometimes it could be like the farmland. So therefore, let's have a look. Okay, if we can go inside like Lam Sang White. Ah, that is the store. Okay, like this. You can see the fish pond. Okay, fish pond. Uh, the major activities in the fish pond it should be for the uh, freshwater fishery. Okay, this is a type of farming, a type of farming. So therefore, farming, uh, fishing, that would be the major activities in the rural area. Okay, and also let me show you. Okay, maybe like this. Yes, you can see people take the photos. Okay, like this. Also the fish pond, and you won't see much high buildings there. Okay. So that is not exactly developed. So therefore, therefore, that would be like the rural area. And for the topic today, okay, we're going to talk about 
what should be the traditional okay so our focus that would be traditional traditional rural life in Hong Kong okay so let's go back to your textbook let's go back to your textbook okay okay please wait for a moment I need to get back some stationery okay so let's see first first uh, when we talk about like uh, what should be the rural society in Hong Kong so we may say it right now especially right now Hong Kong actually that is like a uh, highly developed okay just now I have mentioned developed so that would be the urban area or highly westernized as Hong Kong was the colony of the, uh, the Britain Therefore, in our culture, okay, um, I would say for our daily life, it has been influenced, seriously influenced by the Western culture, Western lifestyle. That's why here we may say that would be like a Westernized society. So Hong Kong's young generation may therefore tend to think that traditional rural society is totally unrelated to Hong Kong development however of course that would be wrong it is because there's still a lot of a large number of traditional village in the new territories uh, I hope you may hear a term okay uh, like this war okay not not very clear I may use yellow then war village War village. So there's lot of war village in Hong Kong. So war village, uh, in Chinese when we call it like uh white tuna. White tuna. Uh, if you study or yes, if you study in Eastern District, Eastern District. Uh, I think not many of you uh lived or have lived in war village it is because um, in the eastern district there's not much war village most war village that would be in the new territories for example like in Junlong uh, in Tun Moon, in Sheng Shui or even like Tai Po like for Mr. Liu okay so uh, I lived in war village before okay and they are uh, actually war village that would be a very important for the Hong Kong history. So therefore, for this, for this topic, we're going to talk about like ah, uh, what should be the rural life? Okay, what would be uh the elements of the rural life in Hong Kong? So let's start. Okay, let's start. Okay. Right now we're going to the part A. Part eight. So we may talk about like the P historic time in Hong Kong. So I hope uh, you still remember like what would be a uh, P historic time. So that is the time, okay, before before the invention of writing. Uh, from our study, I hope, uh, I think you still remember uh, when we talk about like the world history, okay? When we talk about like the world history, we uh, always mention that uh, like the prehistoric time end at the uh, 4000 BC. It is because at that time, okay, the Sumerian uh, invent the earliest writing. However, however, uh, when the Sumerian invent the writing, then does the people lived in like China or live in this region or like live in Hong Kong okay did they use the same writing so therefore uh, can we say that like ah the prehistoric time in Hong Kong end at about like 4000 BC uh, of course no so therefore uh, let's have a look like what should be or when when 
what is the start of the historic time or when was uh, the end of the prehistoric time of Hong Kong. So you may have a look about the paragraph in this part, okay, like uh, from the archaeolog archaeological findings, okay, before uh, we will say it, people already lived in Hong Kong at around the late late old stone age late old stone age so from the archaeolo archaeological findings from some of uh, lot of artifacts okay we know that uh, there were people live in Hong Kong for a long time even at the period around the late old stone age old stone age it means like uh maybe like uh, 10,000 years ago, okay, 10,000 years ago, ago. However, however, when should be like the end of the prehistoric time, or when should, uh, do we see the earliest written record or any record, okay, to prove that uh, there was people live in Hong Kong? Okay, you may have a look here. Later, the Qing government, okay, so this one, that would be what we always mentioned, Chun Chiula, okay, the Qing government extend its route to southern China, southern China. If you, if you know more uh, uh, about like the Chinese history, okay, so you may know that, okay, this southern China, it related to this one, okay, Yu Guo La. Okay, so at that time, we may call it like Ba Yu or Lam Yu. Okay, Lam Yu. So in English, you may say like Nan Yu, something like this. Okay, so the Qing government actually uh, conquered the southern China. So that what here it was a uh, country, country or a uh, territory of a kingdom, and and we would say it, the prehistoric times of Hong Kong, then it end in this at this time, two hundred and fourteen BC. Why it is because once the Qing government extend its route to southern China. Uh, it means that writing, writing or what we call like record, will start from that time. Then we will say it, the historic times then start. So therefore, uh, right now, right now, do we have some document? Do we have any writing that prove or that record? the life of Hong Kong people before 214 BC? Uh, I would say no, I would say no. So one of the record that would be like the Qing government, okay, the Qing government that conquer or extend its roots to southern China. So that is one of the record and that's it. Uh, for the records before, such as like for the, or, uh, about the oracle, in the Shang Dynasty, Shang Chiu la, Gap Guat Man la. Uh, is there any record about like the development in Hong Kong? Uh, sorry, no. That's why. That's why we will still say like uh in Hong Kong, this is still in the prehistoric time until two hundred and fourteen BC. Okay. So therefore, therefore after that, after that, okay or later later in the modern times in the modern times so the archaeologists okay so they try to discover more artifacts okay such as like rock carving k port bone fat salt all over hong kong and all these elements or all these objects actually it can also prove the life of the people in the prehistoric time in Hong Kong, especially, especially uh, like the rock carving. Okay, I will show you the rock carving later. 
So therefore, that would be uh, the end of the prehistoric time. And then right now, right now, okay, let's have a look uh, on the next page. So uh, on the next page, it shows some examples, okay, examples about the archaeologists, archaeologists uh, findings in Hong Kong, such as, such as, the, just now we have mentioned the clay pot, such as the stone axe, such as like the rock carving, rock carving, okay. So let's have a look, uh, where do we, uh, where uh, did the archaeologists discover those artifacts? Okay, uh, from the paragraph here, it mentioned like in Tun Moon, okay, in Tun Moon, especially in Long Ku Tan, Long Ku Tan. Long Ku Tan. Long Ku Tan in Chinese, uh, that would be Long Ku Tan. Okay, if you look at the map, where is Long Ku Tan? Okay, so uh, on this page, you can see this part of. Uh, I don't really like the control. Okay, this is Toon Moon. This is Toon Moon. This is Toon Moon. Okay, Long Ku Tan. Okay, you can see that would be in the west of Hong Kong. The west of Hong Kong, Long Ku Tan. And this area, okay, so we always call this Long Ku Wan, Long Ku Zhao, something like that. Okay, so uh, before we discover some artifacts, okay, in Two Moon, in Long Ku Tan. Uh, that would be the clay port, that would be the stone axe, and then, and then, for the rock carving, okay, rock carving, in Chung Chow, in Chung Chow, big wave bait, big wave bait, Po Toy Island, Po Toy Island, Chung Zhou la, Da Long Wan la, Po Toy Do la, we have these kind of stones, okay, rock carving, so, what would be what would be the looks of the rock carving here? So you may have a look that would be like this, okay? Uh, if you have chance to go to Chang Chow, uh, you may see that rock carving. If you go to like Wang Zhuk Hang, uh, if I remember correct, Wang Zhuk Hang, there is also some rock carving. However, however, for those rock carving. Uh, what is the meaning of this? I would say it, uh, you may just see some symbols. Okay, some symbols there. Symbols. Symbols. Symbols there. And actually, that is not exactly writing. That is not writing. Not writing. So, therefore, therefore, we actually do not know the meaning. That's why in your textbook, in your textbook, uh, it just mentioned this rock carving might be related to the religious rites. So that is uh, not, sh we're not sure actually what is the meaning for that. That's why that is still uncertainty. So we may say uh, people might have prayed in front of these carving before they went fishing. So we use the word might because we're not quite sure. Okay, so let me show you like where would be this rock carving. Okay, let's go back to the Google map. Okay. Okay, we now go to the Cheng Chao. Okay, Cheng Chao. So uh, I think that most of you you may visit Cheng Chao before. Okay, so uh, that would be the uh, ferry. That would be the port. Okay, the port. When you arrive Cheng Chao, okay, many of you would like to visit that site. That will be on the east. On the east, uh, Dong Wan. So, uh, this is a very very nice beach. Okay, if you go to the east, there is a very famous hotel in Cheng Chao. Okay, Cheng Zhao Hua Wei Zhao Dim. And okay, at the bottom, okay, or 
actually uh, not the bottom it's just next to the hotel uh, I may tell you here for that point that would be the rock carving if you look at the photos or the street view there okay you may see uh, we have a visitor here okay there there so the rock carving actually that would be um, put inside the box here that would be for the preservation okay and everyone everyone could have a look okay for the rock carving if they visit Cheng Chao but uh, same what is the exact meaning for this one uh, right now we do not really understand okay it is because there's still no record no record or no explanation no writing to talk about uh, what is the meaning for that so therefore all this that is still like the uh, p historic findings in hong kong p historic finding in hong kong and then okay next you can also see uh, where can we see some prehistoric archaeological sites in Hong Kong okay in Lantau Island in Cheng Chau in Lemma Island or in Po Toy Island in Po Toy Island okay why in this area it is because uh, those area those area that is close to the sea okay and from the archaeologist finding we note the people at that time they mainly fish or hunt for living okay that's why that's why most archaeologist artifact that would be found at the coastal area Okay, coastal area, okay. okay, so here that would be about uh, in the next page in, of your textbook, that is also one extra information uh, that would be called the Ma Wen people. Ma Wan Yan. Okay, so why the Ma Wen people would be famous? It is because in the area in the area of Ma Wen, Ma Wanat, okay, so we have to find some uh, important archaeological site or archaeological findings there. And that's why we named the people there Ma Wanyan. So what would be the archaeologist findings? For example, okay, so there will be P historical burial site. Uh, and we can find some human skeletal remains. Okay. So therefore, uh, we may say uh, in the past there may be some people live in Mawen and right now we may call them like Ma Wanyan. And the most important that is those people actually live in Hong Kong in the prehistoric time. But why? Why? Why do we discover those uh, archaeological artifacts or finding in Ma Wan? It is because if you look at here, if you look at here, so in 1993, in 1993, okay, and start from 1997, uh, the government started to uh, discover those findings in Ma Wan. It is because during 1990s, okay, uh, the Hong Kong government started to develop the Lantau Island. For example, the new towns like Tong Chung, okay, uh, the new airport in Chet Lap Kok. So therefore, when there's lot of new development, uh, the government must carry out some investigation before the development. So therefore, during this investigation, Okay, they discover a lot of light archaeological artifacts at that area. So then we note, or for this title, we may say like, ah, oh, rescuing the Ma Wen people. Uh, same as the uh, current situation right now, 
uh, we developed the right now we're building the railway okay so uh, the Sha Tin Central Express Sa Zhong Xina and those railway actually pass through the area of Tou Kwa Wan Tou Kwa Wan then a few years ago we discovered the ancient rails in the Song Dynasty so therefore you can see that these archaeological artifacts actually why suddenly we discover this it is because as we need to develop this place then before that we need to carry out some investigation okay after that uh, we find some artifacts there so uh, 20 something or more about like 30 years we find the Marwan people few years ago we found the song belt and in the future uh, we may find more okay so therefore that would be about some um, information about the archaeological discovery okay in Hong Kong or in the island and you can see that uh, there's more information about like the archaeologist deco discovery okay in the Lemma Island this one okay we may say ah that could be in the new stone age new stone age okay why it is because it is because uh, you can see what would be the what would be the artifacts that could be pottery jar or bones axe I hope you still remember uh, you have learned in your first topic okay uh, for the topic in the stone age okay at the late stone age people discovered metal so therefore uh, bones eggs and then in the new stone age people started to make pottery okay so therefore uh, this this finding actually uh, it can date back to the new stone age as well so therefore uh, for the lead thing in Hong Kong uh, for the people living in Hong Kong so the history it could be quite long for example okay so uh, actually we do not discuss this much okay like this uh, what is this background this background that would be the exhibition in the uh, mu history museum of Hong Kong so that would be uh, that shows actually the life in the stone age in Hong Kong and you can see that ah we imagine that the people in the past actually live near the coast that's why we can see uh, the beach and here you can see here you can see okay so that could be the life of the people and they make pottery and uh, with fire something like that okay so if you have chance you can also visit the museum okay then let's continue let's continue okay so for the discussion in your textbook so therefore for part two uh, it talk about like the life of Hong Kong people actually we have already mentioned a lot about the life of Hong Kong people so uh, mainly you should know that uh, like the people in the prehistoric times they hunt they fish to survive so that's why most artifacts it could be found in the coastal area and then later and then later okay so the bones age of Hong Kong start ah we can trace back that is about like 1500 BC why it is because the archaeologists find some bones eggs spearhead knife and also hook okay from this period and then we can say it, we can say it, uh, that would be like the bones age of Hong Kong and we can also we can also link link all these artifacts okay you can see that for the last paragraph these bronze artifacts are similar to those used in the ancient people from the southern China just now I have mentioned okay uh, okay so they therefore they related to they related to the archaeologists therefore infer infer okay you should know this word infer infer uh, it means like toilon okay so therefore they uh, 
They therefore infer that the prehistoric people in Hong Kong came from the southern China. So therefore, ah, uh, we do not have much uh, information about like the prehistoric life in Hong Kong because we don't have much artifacts. But, but we can make use of the existing artifacts, okay, and then compare with the artifacts in the southern China. Then we can infer like the life in Hong Kong that could be similar to the people in the southern China. Why? It is because they were lived, uh, they were living in the same region, and it is expected that they might have the similar living style. So therefore, that would be the uh, life in the prehistoric time in Hong Kong. Okay, after that, after that, let's have a look about the what about the historic time of Hong Kong? Historic time of Hong Kong. For historic time of Hong Kong, okay, so we know that record uh, writing has been invented. So therefore, uh, when we study the historic time in Hong Kong, it is necessary for us to study some written source. Okay, is there any written source, okay, uh, to talk about the life of the uh, uh, the life of Hong Kong people in the past? Of course, yes. Okay, so those written source includes like government documents, okay, Do government documents, genealogy books, okay, in Chinese we call it zhuk po la. Uh, for that one, okay, for genealogy, genealogy books. Uh, can we study something for that? Of course, yes. Uh, uh, what can we study? At least we can study like the family structure. Family structure. We can also study like, or we can also say that is one of the record. One of a long record. It is because that will be a record for the whole family. Okay, so therefore, when we study history, uh, when we talk about like written sorts, genealogy books, okay, it will be also useful. Okay, then private writing, all this that would be uh, some written sorts we can refer to study the history of Hong Kong. And then, ah, here, the next one. Hong Kong was first mentioned in the new territories, oh no, mentioned in the new history of the Tang Dynasty. Okay, this one, uh, you must highlight this. Okay, the new territories of the Tang, the new history of Tang Dynasty. Okay, in Chinese, okay, if I, in Chinese, you can see it on the next page. New history of Tang Dynasty, Sun Tong Su La. Okay, so Hong Kong was first mentioned. Was first mentioned. However, however, uh, that's the word. That's the term. Like Hong Kong, exactly written in the book. Uh, I may tell you no, no. Uh, before, before. Uh, Hong Kong for this word, uh, for the name of this play, actually it didn't exist. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Then what should be the name of Hong Kong? Uh, I would say before Hong Kong, there's no name, no name. That is just a place, and that is part of the southern China. So there, then, let's have a look about this timeline. Okay. Okay, so what should be like the uh, political record of Hong Kong? So start from 2041 BC. Okay, Hong Kong was administrated by Pan Yu. Pan Yu la. Hong Kong is Pan Yu. Guan Hat ge yi ge fan wei. Okay, so therefore at that time, uh, we don't use the term Hong Kong. Then later, later. We use the term like Bao An, Bo On, Bo On, and then later that would be uh, if I remember correct, it should be like uh, during the Tang Dynasty. 
Hong Kong administrated by like Dongguan, 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 and then later, later, okay, Xinan, Sanon, and and we do not really have the word, uh, the name for Hong Kong, so therefore, uh, what should be the name of Hong Kong? The name of Hong Kong. For the next part, we are going to talk about like ah the origins of the name of Hong Kong. Hong Kong actually for these two words Hong Kong, okay, when it appear, when it appear, okay, you can see that Hong Kong as a place of the name first appear on a map, on a map from the Ming Dynasty. 明朝嘅時候有幅地圖，咁就有香港呢一隻字，香港呢隻字。OK， if we look at this map， OK， in your textbook， in your textbook， you can see that here， that will be like Hong Kong， Hong Kong。OK， before we talk about this map， let's have a look about some basic information， like ah， where is the Meaning of Hong Kong, so there could be a lot of meaning of Hong Kong, like uh we may say. Ah,、uh, the port of Hong Kong produced a lot of incense wood, 一啲嘅香木啦，做一啲香烛，点香嗰啲嘅香木。So therefore, people named the place, okay, Hong, Hong, okay. So that would be the incense wood, and then Kong it means like the port. So as Hong Kong was the area, okay, like the for the production of this incense wood, so therefore people may call it Hong Kong. Okay, so that could be one of the explanation. Another explanation, ah,、uh, we may say it like ah、uh, in nine on、uh, in eighteen forty one when the British soldier arrived Hong Kong. Okay, so when they asked the villagers what's the name of that, so the villagers replied like Hong Kong, Hong Kong. So therefore, ah,、uh, the villagers thought that ah、uh, for that place that would be like Hong Kong. Okay, ah,、uh, is there any errors? Any problem about the? Okay. Uh, I hope there will be no problem. Okay. Can anyone say if there's any error for the live stream? Okay. Please reply. Please reply in the live chat. Can you still see the video? It is because from my from my operation, I can see some error. Can anyone reply? Can anyone reply? Can anyone reply? Okay, it is because a warning has been pop out. In my screen. Okay. Ah,、oh, you you can still see the video. Okay, then I continue. But it sometimes freezes. Okay. Uh. Okay. Ah,、uh, let's continue then. Let's continue. So if this if the problem exists, okay. So ah,、uh, I may upload the video to. I may use an other copy to upload, upload to YouTube. Okay, so let's continue. Let's continue. Okay, ah,、uh, where do we stop? Ah, okay, here. So the name of Hong Kong, the name of Hong Kong, and then ah,、uh, another, another, right? Ah,、uh, another explanations for the name of Hong Kong that would be people say like the water. 
the water of the mountain stream in the southern Hong Kong island was clear and fragrant. Okay, so therefore people named the whole island, okay, as like Hong Kong, Hong la. Okay, this is the smell is very strong Hong Kong. So uh, that could be also related to the British show, soldier. It is because before, okay, so that would be like the British soldiers uh, when they arrived Hong Kong for what for water, okay. So the southern Hong Kong island here, so people people say it could be like the part of like Hong Kong Zai. Ah, we may not note, we may not note, and then uh one more explanation that would be like. That is also related to the incense wood, the incense burner. A red incense burner was washed up on the coast, okay, of the present day of Causeway Bay. People built a small temple there and burned incense in the red incense burner. The place was named Hill of the Red Incense Burner. Then, uh, the shortened the name, okay, we called Hong Kong. 一樣啦,同一些燒的香油罐啦。Okay, so therefore, therefore, that would be like the name of Hong Kong. And then, right now, let's have a look about this map. Okay, about this map. Okay, that is the map just now we have mentioned. Okay, I need to hide the chart first. Okay, it won't block the photos. Okay, uh, this, is a, this is a very, very old map. Okay, made by the Chi Chinese during the Ming Dynasty. So that is map of Hong Kong. Uh, if you study like the uh geography, geography, uh, do we use this map right now? Of course, no. Or uh, you should have studied geography. Do you think this map? Do you think this map? Uh. It would be good or not? Of course, no. Why not? It is because uh, from this map, uh, can you see the north arrows? Okay, no. Is there any scale? No. Uh, is there any color that show the different land use? Of course, no. Okay. So therefore, uh, that is a very, very old map, but uh, you can still see some uh, landmark, okay, of the place. For example, okay, this time I use red, it will be clear. First, you can see the island here named Hong Kong. Hong Kong, named Hong Kong. So therefore, therefore, ah, that would be like Hong Kong Island. Hong Kong Island. This one, Hong Kong Island. Hong Kong Island. Then, what would be the other place? Can you see the name of the other place? So let's have a look. Here, you can see Po Thoi Do. Yes, Po Thoi Do. That is an island here. Po Thoi Do. And for some names. You may be uh, very familiar with this. Shao Ki Ren, Shao Ge Wan, Dai Tam, Che Chu, Wang Lai Chong, Chun Ham or Chun Hoi, I don't know. Okay. Teet Hang here. Okay, so that would be the place we may know right now. And then, actually, from this map, you can see it should be the island. Okay. The island here. The island here. And I may tell you for the place like Teet Hang. Actually, that is the place in Wang Zhuk Hang right now. Tit Hang is now Wang Zhuk Hang. Okay, so therefore, 
if we color this, if we use this uh, map, we know that that is the exact exact Hong Kong Island right now. 呢個就係而家我哋成日講嘅香港島。And before before we talk about uh the place Hong Kong here, okay? Let's talk about more places. Okay, and you can still see some named right now. Okay, you may be very familiar with this, such as like Gao Long San, Gao Long San. If I remember correct, it should be like the、uh, Lime Rock, Si Si San. You can see Li Yu Moon. You can see Li Yu Moon. You can see Zhang Guan O. Okay, you can see. Jim Sa Joy, you can see Kui Chong right there. So therefore, if we link, if we link the land, okay, if we link the land here, okay, the land here, actually, this is the place of Kowloon Peninsula. Kowloon Peninsula. Therefore, therefore, ah, from this we can say for this map the north arrow it should be like this, and north arrow. So this is the north, this is the north, and here that would be the south. That would be the south. Okay, then one more, one more island, here. Okay, there's an island. Chun Fa Lo, Chun Fa Lo. Where is Chun Fa Lo? Okay, I may tell you. Chun Fa Lo. Actually, that is right now. Just now,、uh, we mentioned Tit Hang. That is Wang Yuk Hang. Chun Fa Lo. That would be, I may tell you, Ching Yi. That is the Ching Yi Island. So therefore, from this map, actually, we can see, we can see a lot of place. Okay, we can observe even like in Hong Kong. So let's have a look about the map of Hong Kong right now. Okay. Uh, the map of Hong Kong. Okay, like this. Okay, so uh, this is north, and this is south. And if I turn to reverse, okay, reverse, reverse, okay, like this. Okay, you may refer to the map just now, okay. Mister Liu, draw here. Okay, Chun Fa Lo, Ching Yi, that would be at that point. Okay, Chim Sa Chui. Here, Chim Sa Chui, Chang Kuen Oh, much farther away. Okay, much farther away, and you will see, you will see, Sao Gay Wan for that point. Sao Gay Wan, Tak Chu a little bit height, and then, uh, Tit Hang Wang Zhuk Hang. It should be this. Okay, then. If you refer, if you refer to the map, Hong Kong Island right here. Where is that Hong Kong Island? Okay, I may tell you, Hong Kong Island that is exactly the small island here. The small island here, that is Up Lei Zhou. Okay, so actually, actually, for the name, for the name of Hong Kong. Uh, it's come from this island, Up Lei Zhou, and the original name, the original name for that, that is from here. And for other place, uh, we don't really uh say it's like Hong Kong. But later, when we study uh the history uh of Hong Kong, we know the uh especially for the uh when do we use the term like Hong Kong? Much that is after Hong Kong became the colony of the of the Britain. Okay, so、uh, we talk about it later. So therefore,、uh, remember for Hong Kong, for Hong Kong, actually here that will be updated. 
Okay, then uh, we can go a little bit fast. It is because uh, I would like to do some exercise with you today. Okay, uh, after the written source, uh, we may talk about like the non-written source. For the non-written source, uh, there's a lot of archaeological sites and also artifacts Okay, to show the historic time in Hong Kong, such as such as Li Cheng Oak Hang Tomb, Li Cheng Oak Gu Mo la, and also some archaeological site in Tou Kwa Wen, Li Cheng Oak Gu Mo in uh, Chang Sa Wan, Chang Sa Wan, okay? So those artifacts, it actually it can date back to the Eastern Han Dynasty, Dong Han, and also the Song Dynasty, Song Chiu la. Okay, for example, just now uh, I have mentioned the uh, ancient Song well, uh, Song Chiu Gu Zheng. And then uh, for the pictures and buildings, okay, you can see there's a lot of maps, drawing, pictures, okay, for the uh, historical non written source, okay. For example, uh, just now we read the map, okay. Besides, there's still a large number of century old buildings, century old centuries old buildings in the new territories. Uh, we can learn the Hong Kong traditional world society. For this, just now I've mentioned that could be like some world village. Okay, world village. And then uh, here, how do we know the Li Cheng Oak Hang tomb belonged to the Hang Dynasty? Okay, uh, this one, uh, I will read it for you, you may read it by yourself, okay, you may read it by yourself, but uh, I may I may mark one point for you, okay, if you look at the third point, if you look at the third point, okay, I may talk about this, uh, the second point here, you may notice, you may notice that is, inside the hack tomb, we can find that we can find that okay the tomb was similar to the other hang tomb that's why we may call Li Cheng Oak that would be from Eastern Hang Dynasty and then in the hang tomb there were the clay house model and also pottery unearthed okay 有些的呃呃土嗰些叫嗰些叫咩啊clay what is clay clay is that? Uh, I don't know. Okay, clay mod, clay house model. It's like a clay, 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 uh, the brick used in the tomb actually actually so later I will show you a video uh, there's what there were marked great for great fortune pen to pen you and also peace to pen you okay and pen you was one of the district of the time of the hang tomb if I remember correct the right thing in Chinese, it could be something like this. Uh, okay, the word actually uh, written in the bricks, okay, in the hand tomb. So therefore, uh, from that, uh, from all this finding, we may know that um, the tomb actually that would be from the Eastern Han Dynasty. So if you have chance, uh, you can also visit the uh, Li Cheng Oak Ham Tomb in Cheng Sha Wen. Okay, so that is open to public. However, uh, you should go after like the disease passed. Okay, then uh, for the last part for today. Okay, here that would be the exercise. Okay, exercise. Okay, here that would be about some source, some sources. Okay, so that is related to the history of Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Uh, if you look at if you look at uh, the question, question one and question two. Okay, question one and question two. Uh, you need to identify. You need to identify whether they are the written or non-written source. Written and non-written source. Okay, so let's do it together. 
Okay, first, first, for source A, for source A, for sources, it is uh, a reference to Hong Kong in the new history of Tang Dynasty. Okay, uh, is it written source? Of course, this is written source. Written source. Okay, then the second one, uh, genealogy books. Okay, belong to a clan in Tui Moon. Uh, is that written source? Of course, this is written source. Written source. Okay, then uh, the third one, corns from the Qing dynasty. Qing Qiu ge ang bai la. Of course, that is non-written. Non-written source. And source D, source D, a statue of Buddhist monk Pui to, Pui to la, who came to Hong Kong in the 5th century. Of course, that is not written source, that is non-written. Okay, and then source E, a Tong Chong fortress. Okay, that is very obvious, that is non-written. That is non-written. And then uh, the last one, source F. Source F. Some artifacts. So we can see uh, like the pottery jars or some remains, of course, that is non written. Non written source. Okay, so uh, I don't think that would be uh, complicated. But for the last question, okay, question two. Question two. Which aspect of the early history of Hong Kong can we learn from source A to F. Okay, write down or highlight the word expect. Expect, uh, it, you have to learn this term. It is because in, uh, in the humanity subjects, you should know how to identify different aspects. Uh, uh, I don't like the term gokdo, maybe fan or something like this. Okay, uh, from from this exercise, uh, you should note uh, how do we how do we divide it uh, to divide the source into different aspect, or you may ask, uh, what could be different aspect? Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, this one that would be a little bit complicated. That would be a little bit complicated. Okay, so let's have a look about like source A. Uh, this time, this time, oh, you, you need to read the information. You need to read the information. Okay, uh, if you look at the information of source A, okay, uh, what can you see? What can you see? Uh, you can see some names of the place, right? Some name of the place. Uh, you can uh, see the distance. You can see distance. Therefore, what is it exactly? From the title, uh, it mentioned like the reference to Hong Kong. And then in this, that is uh, about the name of the places. The name of the places. Therefore, I may tell you, this source, this is related to, this is related to, the territories, okay. This is related to the territories uh, of Hong Kong. Uh, uh, or you may say this is related to like boundary, boundary. Okay, this is related to like the uh, territories. So therefore, what is exactly the aspect for this source? This aspect, as it is related to uh, boundary, it is related to the territories, we may say this is related to political aspects. Uh, political. Okay, uh, anything related to this. So that is related to the political, that is related to the government. Okay, so therefore the aspect for uh, source A, it should be political. 
Okay, then uh, source B, source B. A genealogy books, okay, belong to a clan, clan. It is Jokwana, okay. So just now I said, uh, I said that uh, it is related to like the family, related to family structure. So therefore, uh, which aspect that would be related to? So as this is related to like family, okay, all this that is related to family. That is related to family. Therefore, for the expat, we may say this is related to social expat. Social expat. Okay, you may write it down first. Social expat. Okay, then the third one. Okay, uh, you can see some corns there. Corns. So what would be the use of like for those corns? That would be used it for like trading, right? Trading that would be related to like the economic activity, buy and sales, buy and sell trading. So therefore, for the aspect, okay, uh, related to this source, we may say this is related to the economic economic aspect. Economic aspect, 同經濟有關的啦. Okay, then source D, a statue of Buddhist Buddhist monk. Okay, related to monk, so that is also obvious. That is related to religion. That is related to religion. Therefore. Therefore, okay. Uh, what is the aspect? What is the aspect related to this? That is the religious religious aspects. Religious aspects. Okay. Then source E. Source E. You can see that uh, that is a fortress. That is a fortress. Okay, built by the Qing Dynasty. Okay, you can see the fortress. So therefore, what would be the use of the fortress? Of course, that would be for the for the war. Or I don't really like the word war. Uh, I prefer that is for the that is for the defense defense. Okay, national defense. So therefore, what should be the expert? The expert. Uh, we may say. It that is the military. 一些跟軍事有關的啦, okay, then the last one. The last one. Okay, some artifacts from the Jin Dynasty discovered in Hong Kong. Okay, you can see the pottery, you can see pottery, uh, you can see the artifacts. So mainly this one we talk about like artifacts. Sometimes we can see a uh, different, uh, like how the people produce, produce, okay, these artifacts or these objects, okay, this one, this is related to, uh, no, not social, this is related to the cultural aspect, 同文化有关的啦,同文化有关, therefore, therefore, okay, all these six sources, Six source, okay, in green, remember in green, in green, so that is related to this six different aspect. Then for uh, question two, you may say, you may say, uh, we can learn about the political, social, economic, religious, military, culture, and cultural aspect of early Hong Kong history from these sources okay so therefore uh, that would be about this for the uh, application of uh, like the expect expect uh, we will we will use the next part okay we will use the next part to talk about this uh, but uh, for the next part for the next part uh, I'm not going to explain this today I'm not going to explain this today so uh, I will explain this uh, in the next lesson okay it is because today's uh, today that would be almost 
uh, time's up. Okay. Uh, for the next lesson, I will remind you the time in the Google Classroom as well. Okay. So therefore, therefore for the teaching, so that is almost like this. But before, before we end, we end um, the lesson. Uh, let me show you something. Okay. So I would like to show you. Okay, so that would be the rural life in Hong Kong in the past. In the past, uh, this is a Facebook page called uh, Si Hong Kong. Actually, uh, some people themed some scenes in Hong Kong before. For example, this one that is almost 80 years ago. 80 years ago. Okay, and uh, they do the colorization, so that's why we can see the color right now. And uh, for example, for this clip, it shows the uh, exact scenes in typo okay and you can also uh, imagine like uh, what would be the rural life okay in the past for example uh, here that would be the harbor I expect that could be the Tolo harbor okay and you can see uh, that is the train used it 80 years ago and of course you can see like the clothing okay of the people and this one that is the uh, train station okay typo market train station and you can still see okay like old uh, Chinese style building or architecture style okay so that would be the typo market okay then uh, you can see here like the people who live in typo okay so uh, this one that would be in rural life why it is because okay uh, let me pause this first you can still see some farmland here okay farmland here and here that will be Tolo Harbor you won't see much more than building it is because that would be uh, in 80 years ago okay and you can see the small boats okay that would be used to for fishing for some uh fishery industry okay and then uh like this uh that would be if i if i understand it right it could be related to like the salt or the uh, pearl diving industry so uh for the industry like in hong kong we will talk about it in the next lesson for uh, in this part in this part okay in this part so therefore um, that is about the end of today's lesson okay so I expect I expect um, we will have another session, okay, uh, in about like two to three days or uh, maybe next week, okay. So I hope, I hope uh, I can finish like the Vol Village, Vol Village next time. Oh no, not the Vol Village. So it should be like the uh, different families, different families. Okay, uh, so therefore that would be uh, the end of the lesson today and here it would be about some extra information that is uh, after I end this video after I end this video I will also put some uh, hyperlink okay on the description uh, that would be useful for your uh, uh, study that would be some reference for you and also I will post the link to the Google classroom okay and again if you have any problem if you have any questions okay please please let me know okay so that could be a uh, different means uh, for example uh, here okay so the telephone number and also the email and also uh, actually you can you can type some questions here you can type some questions here actually I can see uh, Stephen don't uh, 
actually uh, I don't know okay so uh, again if you have any questions okay please type it here and okay so that's all for today again uh, please subscribe my channel and please pay attention okay so to my online lessons okay so this is the end of the lesson and I will see you soon okay goodbye